The immortal pen of James Fenimore Cooper brings you thrilling tales of excitement. Blazing action on the early American frontier. Stirring adventures filled with the daring and courage of Hawkeye, first of the long rifles, and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans. Funny. People usually head for the meeting house when the bell tolls, not run from it. Yeah, he's not to be seen. Rope motionless. There's not a soul up there. We're bewitched, I tell you, Preacher Hale. And I tell you there's an earthly explanation for it, Mr. Burns. There must be some reason for it. A bell doesn't ring by itself. The wind, perhaps. There isn't breeze enough to blow a feather. Witchcraft, that's what it is. Come now, Sneed. Witches in a house dedicated to worship? <laughs> Poppycock. Then what made the bell toll with not a human hand to touch the rope? Bewitched, that's what we be. The whole town's bewitched. Ah, oh, Hawkeye. Chingachgook. Squire Griggs, these are the men who guided the first settlers into this township. You're more than welcome. Preacher Hale's been telling me he sent for you. We're going to need more than ball and powder to help us chase away witches. Oh, uh, maybe we should have brought our broomsticks. It's not anything to be made light of. Uh, he speaks gospel, Hawkeye. Wayneville's beset with superstition and fear. The preacher can tell you what we've been enduring after a bit of refreshment. Oh, I'm sorry you've come a long way. But this evil that's abroad has been very upsetting. I not believe in witches, but when belly is full... Ears are more willing to listen. Just mention food and Chingachgook starts thinking about his stomach. Well, it'll be potluck, but there'll be plenty to fill your thoughts, Chingachgook. I told you no a dozen times. Your animals be witch. Now get it out of here. It's the Bradleys. Why, they're one of our oldest families. They just can't be leaving. We best try to stop them. Yes. Sneed, this is all the money I have. You can have it in my horse to boot. No, not ten times that amount would get me to trade horses with you, Farmer Bradley. Oh, your wagon. You have all your household goods on it. And a lame horse to pull it. But pull she will eat or she drops to get me and my family out in this cursed land. What are you saying, man? You've cleared a farm, held on to it through a year's Indian fight, and you can't leave now. Think of Ruth and Prudence. You can't be footloose now. I came here thinking of them, and I'm leaving for the same reason. Think again, Farmer Bradley. You've got a good farm, years of toil in building a home. You've no valid reason deserting it. Look at this. This is the witch's warning. For two days, I laughed at it. And then, without reason, my horse went lame. Well, it'd take more than an ordinary rag doll to lame a horse. Besides, if you'd pull a knit needle out of that, that doll would make any little girl happy. May my arms shrivel before I let Prudence touch this cursed puppet! Paul, I've seen you face murder and savages without turning your back. Trusting in the Lord and the right of standing on your land. You've seen Kilbane do the same. And Matthews and all the others. And they've gone. Engines are flesh and blood. But how's a man fight a rag doll? A, a horse that goes lame? Bradley's right. I shot that horse. Its legs are sound as a shilling, but still it's lame. A horse doesn't go lame unless there's some hurt to its leg. Paul, come with me to the meeting house. We'll pray together. Time for prayers is past, preacher. There's nothing out of the ordinary about this doll. That's what I've been telling him, Hawkeye. Same as any good wife uses for knitting. 
Why, even the preacher's wife keeps her hands busy with them. Throw it away, Squire Griggs, lest it fly out of your hand and pierce your heart. You'll not get through the wilderness with one lame horse. Another family gone. Soon the township will be deserted. And the king's charter won't be worth the parchment it's written on. And all we've worked for gone. Better to lose a grant of land than stay in this accursed place. Do you mind if I keep this doll, Squire? Glad to get rid of it. You still hungry? Long time on trail. Much hungry. Well, just a little longer and you'll be hungrier. <laughs> but Hawkeye, I have much to tell you. Where are you going? To the meeting house. Chingachgook and I have got some important thinking to do. You find something? It's nothing to eat, but mighty interesting. What do you make of this? His hair from horse's tail. Yeah, it's strong enough to ring that bell without pulling on the rope. <laughs> but I never hear of horse climbing ladder. I never heard of witches that fly. But a clever witch could stay out of sight up there. That horse hair would be mighty hard to see from down here. Mighty hard to see up close. Suits us, Mr. Bradley. We just want to take a closer look at that lame horse of yours. Your doubt won't cure, stranger. Just take my word for it, she's bewitched. Well, supposing we prove to you that she isn't, would you still be heading away from your home? Well, I... Which is cursed. If you tie a horse hair tight enough around a horse's pastern, and he'll soon go lame. Yeah, but who'd do such a thing if it weren't a witch? Maybe you've got the answer to that. That's an old cavalryman's trick. Well, there ain't no cavalrymen hereabouts that I know of. Well, you never know what people were before they came out here. But what about Kilbane? We saw him draw the milk from his cow. Brimstone it had in its taste and in its smell. Brimstone is sulfur. Cow licks it up, it'll taint the milk. I know every square inch hereabouts. I ain't seen no sulfur. Maybe the same human hand who tied that hair around your horse's leg fed the Kilbane cow sulfur. Well, one thing for sure, by the time you get back to your farm, your horse will forget to limp. I got rid of that once. Throw it away. Oh, a nice doll like this. You're not afraid of it, are you? Sometimes grown-ups forget what a doll really means. You hold it like that, Prudent. It don't seem no harm in it, whatever. Doll and little girl. She'll be loving it with tenderness, Mr. Bradley. I'll be holding to you, stranger. There'll always be a welcome for you and your friend at the Bradley Farm. Yep. <laughs> Chase out of white man's head. Now, we look for food. Huh?
Not look good. A good start for convincing Bradley to go back. The whole town's a buzzing with it. Truly a victory against evil. Well, it's no more than the eye of a needle. There's a tolling of that bell to answer for. Remind me tomorrow to take a look at the cow that Kilbane's left behind. What need? Just might take us one step closer to whoever's trying to get this town to believe in witches. Only a man with a warped mind could be spreading this terror amongst us. Or a woman. Man or woman, a disciple of the devil himself. Well, the bottomless pit's filled. Look at those marks. Look like cut with iron. Chiseled through. Little girl leaning over to get water would have never noticed it. Even men not notice. Looks like our witches didn't care which one of the Bradleys fell in. I want him to. I've got a hunch there's more than one witch in these parts. Shooting him will only leave us a cold trail. Well, you, you see face? No. But there's not more than a couple of saddle horses in the settlement. It shouldn't be too hard to find out which one's been out for a gallop. Always liked watching a smithy work. It's real interesting. Well, don't let me stop you. Got to strike while the iron's hot, don't you? Okay. Nice looking mare. Yours? I've got no time to dally. I might be interested in buying her. Ask Preacher Hale. It's his. Well, thanks anyway. My word on it, Hawkeye. I didn't put saddle to that mare today. That's good enough for me. But somebody had. She was still lathered up when I touched her at the blacksmith shop. Your pardon for bursting in, Preacher Hale, but I found this in my pasture. Smell it. Sulfur. Looks like our witch has been real busy. A few more salt lick blocks like that, and nobody would have milk fit to drink. Where would anyone around here get sulfur? Well... Blacksmith sometimes uses sulfur to cure his iron. So he does. He always talk. Say witches bring magic curse. Maybe he talked too much. Well, one thing's certain. My mare's been ridden. With only Sneed and myself having access to her. What makes you think that Sneed's been riding your mare? Well, a man about Sneed's size tried to shoot Chingachgook and me at the Bradley farm. Got away on the mare. Did you get a good look at him? Not good enough. Mrs. Hale, could you spare a little time from your knitting? Win a good cause. Could you spare one of your knitting needles? Why, I suppose so. What's a knitting needle got to do with Sneed? 
You're not accusing him of being the one behind all this witch business. Uh, I'm not accusing anybody of anything yet. I was just wondering, what would Sneed do if he found one of those rag dolls in his blacksmith shop? And saving some patches for a quilt. It'd be just the thing to make a rag doll. I'm getting out of here. And not even you can stop me. You said all we had to do was scare them by acting like witches. Well, I'm not so sure there ain't none. Otherwise, how did I get this? You sent it! Need. Did you see his face? The fright of the devil on it. Oh, now, Mary, you're not to blame. I hadn't thought it would lead to more killing. You're not to blame any more than the rest of us. If anyone's to take the blame, ma'am, it's me. What have you found out, Hawkeye? Well, nothing very much. I'm afraid the only thing we've got to go on are some hoof prints. Hoof prints? Whoever murdered Sneed must have run off on your mare. Chingachgook and me are going to try and track him down. A hard chore for a man afoot to run down a horse. Even man on horse must stop sometime. May the good Lord be a beacon to them. Otherwise, before this day's over, not a soul will be left in town. Begging your pardon, Squire. Ludkin here wants to know what the preacher's wife was blaming herself for. Long ears, haven't you, Ludkin? Well, he ain't the only one who wants to know what's going on. And the squire of this township, it's your duty to tell us. I don't rightly know there's much to tell. Except in this was found by poor Sneed's body, right in the blacksmith shop. Why, that puppet's made of patches. And I recognize them. Come now, patches of patches. Not when you fingered them as much as I have. And that red one? I gave that to the preacher's wife. Are you sure? Should know my own flannel. What's wrong with you people? The way you're acting, a body would think you were ready to accuse Mrs. Hale of being a witch. Maybe she is. Come on, let's put the question to her. Hold on. How can you even think that our good preacher's wife is a servant of darkness? Why, he's been a blessing to all of us. Sometimes blessings turn to curses. And even good men get taken with bad spirits. We'll talk to both of them. Get the real truth. <laughs> And that needle. I recognize that, too. It's Hearn. To the preacher's house. You'll commit a great wrong if you act in haste. <laughs> Stop here. Someone get off. Walk back to town. I wonder why that someone went to all the trouble of stealing this horse. Maybe try to leave false trail. Lead us out of town. I think you've got something, Chance Cook. With us out of town, the witch might be planning to start a witch hunt. We better get back there. Ye 
made this. Now confess. I confess only my love and devotion to our Lord. Blasphemer. Preacher, renounce her or burn at the stake with her. What madness is this? Burns, won't you see reason? Just because Mary Hale made that doll, you can't... Stay forget. out of this, squire. Or people will begin thinking she's bewitched ye too. But I'll threaten them with the stake. But think yourself. We're man. doing more than threatening. To the fire with them. We've always served our Lord, Mary. If this is his will... Shoot anybody who tries to set fire to the wood. Where you go, my brother? You keep your eyes and ears open, you'll find out. I told you over and over. If I'm guilty, my husband isn't. Let him go. If, if you're a witch, confess and death will be swift. She is innocent. She cannot confess to a lie. Squire Griggs, I appeal to you. I appeal to you. Just admit that your wife's bewitched and you'll be saved. You, you never believed in witchcraft. You're behind all this. What are you, a madman? An accusation from a man possessed means nothing. <laughs> Get flame. Listen to me. It's Griggs. He's the one. He's behind all this. You, you've lost your flock, preacher. They followed you, but they do my bidding now. And before your ashes are cold, the fools will be fleeing, and the town will be mine. <laughs> mine! May you always have the taste of our deaths in your mouth. Mary, if our Lord wishes us to die, Griggs is only his instrument. Don't ring bells. He would to get even. He always hated me, even when we were in the cavalry. But I'm his commanding officer. He'll have to obey me or I'll kill him again. Speed. Stop those bells. Speed. your witch for you. When he comes to, he'll be fit for hanging. You certain you can't stay for service, Hawkeye? We've got a long way to go, preacher. If you want us to spread the word that there never was a witch in this town. Well, whenever we give thanks, we'll be thinking of you. And Chingachgook. Goodbye. Bye. Bell. I always liked bells. Kind of got a song of their own. Like men singing when they're happy and free. Join us again at this same time next week for another of James Fenimore Cooper's gripping tales of the early American frontier. Another exciting adventure of Hawkeye and his blood brother, Chingachgook, last of the Mohicans.